everybody and welcome to your next C sharp XNA platformer tutorial and then this tutorial we're going to be learning about collision I was thinking of um, teaching about map transition but that would make more sense when we get into the event system so I'm going to be teaching collision okay so uh, to start off this tutorial what we're going to do is we're going to highlight we're going to copy and paste one layer of our map right we don't need um, all of them we just need one layer uh, just to get the width and the height of the map. So we're going to make another uh, section to load another identifier or whatever. And we're going to paste our map in there. So for all of my instances of 0, 0, I'm just going to highlight that. Um, select all instances of 0, 0 and replace that with the letter O. All instances of 1, 0. And if you don't have Visual Studio, or you don't have this on your compiler, you can always do this in Notepad++ by just clicking Control H. So all instances of one comma zero, um, I'm gonna replace that with X. So replace all, and for two zero, place it with the X. Okay. So the the Z, the O's are going to represent an open space or anything or passable space. X is going to represent something that is solid. Okay, so I made the ground solid and the platform solid. Okay, so anywhere you detect a circle, um, it means that the player can pass through that. So now we have to create our collision class. Uh, so we'll just call this collision. And I, I should, since all most of their load contents are the same, I could uh, make derive from the map class and just make the load content a virtual function, but uh, that's entirely up to you, not needed. Oh, and we need to add our namespaces, so... Okay, so we have our content manager and our map ID. Sorry for that. Okay, so we're gonna need gonna need a file manager. And a, yeah, if you want to, you can derive from the map class, make the file manager and stuff protected and stuff, just so you don't have to keep writing it out over and over again but uh, this doesn't really bother me so uh, it's fine so we're gonna have a list of a uh, list for strings um so we'll have our attributes we have our contents and it's gonna be our collision map and we'll have a 1d list uh, row or whatever the rows that we're gonna be storing in there Okay, so we have to create an instance of file manager. We have to uh, create an instance of our lists, our contents, and our collision map, uh, as well as our row. So we're going to call file manager load content. So we're loading from load slash maps plus map id plus dot your extension we have our attributes we have our contents and the identifier is collision okay so all this stuff should be familiar to you so let's make uh two for loops is less than attributes dot count or actually, we don't even really need to do do attributes that count. We can count through the contents this time. But the reason why is that because we don't really have any attributes that we need to account for. We just have a bunch of contents uh, in there. And what we got to do is, um, where's the map file? Okay, so we're going to open up the map. And we're going to have to just put an I, I, um an attribute there, an identifier, uh, just so we'll take in these contents. 
Uh, I haven't looked at the file manager code um, in a while, but I don't think it will take in the contents of an identifier. So you could set this uh, this attribute or whatever to map so it can take in all the contents. Okay. Uh, so let's go right here. So instead of going to at, do attributes dot count, we can do count contents dot count. And we'll do for int j equals zero j is less than contents i dot count. And so uh, with each of the contents, or actually we won't even need to actually do that. We won't even actually have to loop through all of these because uh, the contents are a row of strings, right? So we could actually yeah no we'll just do it this way to make it easier uh so we'll just say row dot add contents i j simple enough then outside this for loop we're gonna say uh collision map dot add row rows equal to new list okay so that should store our collision um map uh the way it should be so now we're gonna create an update because we don't really need to draw we don't need to draw this collision map we just need to update it so that the player uh so that we get a collision area and uh we could handle this in the collision map or we could handle this in the player class for now we're going to be doing it in the in the collision class but you can move it to the player class whenever you like to now sorry um we're going to be doing this the less optimized way uh to get it done quicker and for you to easily understand it and then once we got the less optimized way finished then we're going to do the more optimized way uh this way that i'm going to be teaching you is less optimized because it checks for all the collision blocks within the code which takes a bit longer but in the more optimized way, what it's going to do is that it's only going to check the blocks that are within the vicinity of the player itself. So then it doesn't check for all the blocks, only checks for only a few, which is uh, which is a bit better. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass in a reference to uh, or whatever the player position. And I guess we'll have game time. Okay, so what's what's gonna happen is that we have to check. Uh, what well, what we're gonna do is we'll create a a rectangle player rect or whatever and new rectangle. Well, this doesn't really help us because a rect a rectangle only takes an integer values, but the player position could be a float value. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say for an i less than collision map dot count, and if you guys watch the uh, bounding box collision videos, then this should be uh, relatively uh, familiar to you. So we're gonna say that if the player position dot x is less than no player position x plus and we need the player width as well just in case um it isn't uh just in case the players uh let's say let's put dimensions right to two just in case it's not the 32 by 32 let's say it's different whatever uh we need to know right so let's say dimensions dot x is less than uh the less than collision map sorry less than collision map <laughs> sorry i had a brain freeze for a second uh so if the player position is less than collision map ij times uh the tile width no 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 sorry 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 i I'm just having like a brain freeze moment now, so sorry. So this is gonna be uh J times uh what happened? 
Okay, so we're gonna have to have in our player dimensions. So this is gonna take a lot of parameters. Sorry, so we're gonna have to have player dimensions. And we're gonna also have to have uh, tile dimensions. Okay. Uh, so if sorry, so if player dot x plus the dimension of the player, right? So if the x two is less than j times tile dimensions dot x, no, just j times yeah dot x, uh. Or player dot x is greater than j times tile dimensions dot x plus tile dimensions dot x or player position dot y plus p dimension dot y is less than i times tile dimensions dot y or player position dot y plus no player position dot y is greater than i times tile dimensions dot y plus tile dimensions dot y then there is no collision and let me just uh, zoom this in a bit more okay and then else there is a collision uh, so I'm just gonna end it there and we're gonna um, see what happens when there is a collision uh, Sorry for that bit of confusion at the end. I just kind of had a bit of a brain freeze, but um, I hope you guys that didn't confuse you guys, but I will be reviewing it briefly at the start of the next tutorial So I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching and bye